Hi, travelers. If there was a lag on that, you know Mercury retrogrades coming. So, uh, welcome to the second week of August 2016, and this is the eve of the lunar eclipse. Um, for those of you who live in Europe, that eclipse will occur tomorrow. For those of us here in the States, uh, it will occur on the 8th, um, something like that. So, roughly. Um, now, I will not, uh, over the next few days, I won't be bringing you guys an, an open reading. So this is why I'm, I'm doing this now. But in addition, um, I, I think I had been speaking to you guys um, some time ago, or maybe it was the last reading, I don't know, um, about asking the universe to give you signs. And there is something that has been vexing me for, I don't know, maybe three or four years, and I just could not understand uh, what the whole situation was about. So yesterday I was uh, outside. Y'all know I'm an earth sign, so I'm always outside, even in this South Texas heat. <laughs> I am, uh, and I was asking the universe to give me a sign. Uh, I, I was uh, trying to gain some insight, and um, I asked for a bird. And left it alone. And then last night I had this uh, dream. I've been working on uh, vibratory astral uh, projection and working with my uh, doing some mediumship work, asking some guides to come through, ancestor guides to come through and help me. And um, went outside this morning. Uh, to have my coffee and take a look at just nature because I totally dig it and a white dove flew by now I have been in this location three years and I live by the nature preserve so I see egrets I see Texas eagles I see uh, yellow belly warblers I see blue jays I see buzzards I see all kinds of birds and in the three years that I have been here I have never seen a white dove and it flew by and it just it caught my eye because it was so bright it just and it skimmed right across my my eye line you know just like it flew I didn't see it coming at me I, I only caught it just as it, it got like towards the peripheral vision and that was my answer um, so I, I, I keep sharing with you, you guys that you too have that ability to do that. The thing is, is that you want to test and verify, okay? Uh, you don't just want to assume that everybody who tells you that they're psychic or that they're a medium or everybody who tells you uh, that they're in contact with the, with the other dimensional world um, is really dealing with those uh, beings and energies that um, are, are positive and really are coming from a higher vibrational plane, okay? Because sometimes uh, in this work, you can be open and susceptible to very, very low vibrational uh, entities. And so this is not to say that uh, I'm not telling you that if you've gone to another reader, that person is not uh, their um, conduit is uh, less than mine. Uh, I can't speak to anybody else's um, conduit. I can only speak about mine. And those of you who have gotten readings from me know pretty much that, you know, and it kind of makes me feel good in one way. I, I'm, you know, I'm not bragging about it, but that I have a pretty decent conduit. So um, I had been explaining to you that sometimes, most of the time, eclipses will conceal. They never reveal. But I did say to you, I think in the last reading, that this lunar eclipse might give you a glimpse into something. And I got my glimpse. And I figured, well, if you know I got my glimpse, maybe I can help somebody else get their glimpse. So this is the reason why I'm bringing you this reading today. And then I'm going to close my cards. Look at there. I'm going to close my cards down um, for the next couple of days. Um, for those of you who have your charts... Uh, those of you who are website members, I sent out a message or maybe it was on the read. I don't know. People are asking me about readings. And once I close my cards down, 
I do not remember what's going on. I'm kind of in that zone. And once I pull those cards up, the, I, I have to shut the conduit off. That It's a done deal then. So I don't remember a lot of times what I'm actually saying to you guys. And I don't remember sometimes what the story is. Most of the time, I don't remember what the story is. Um, but for those of you, and I mentioned that I was going through a 12th house Pluto transit. Well, if you take your standard chart, the one that has the Coke house system, not the zero Aries chart that I've created for you, but the Coke house system, and find where Pluto, uh, find where the sign of Capricorn, what house does the sign of Capricorn sit? That's where Pluto is, and Pluto is going to be there till 2023. Now, most people are very fearful of Pluto. He's got really this bad reputation. Um, but if you can really understand what he does, and what he does is he, he works under the depths. He works down below, and he brings up things. Um, so, you know, this could even, some people who have like heavy uh, Plutonian signatures in their chart, they're miners, or they dig for gold, or they dig diamonds, or so, you know, oil, uh, they do underground exploratory work, so cave diving. Um, so, um, if you can understand what he does, you can kind of work with the energy. Now, granted, uh, Pluto can bring up manipulations, he can bring up power struggles, and if you're going through that, Look to see where Capricorn, what house Capricorn sits. Okay, and this may explain why you may be dealing with that. Um, for me, it would be uh, an issue of things from childhood, uh, past lives. So this is past life enemies coming back. But it's also a 12th house transit is also known as this, the house of uh of self undoing. In other words, it's about how you sabotage yourself. But these are typically... Uh, because of old behavioral patterns or old ways of thinking or old childhood traumas or old past life traumas that kind of, you know, throw you for a loop and you're not even aware of it. So if you if you know how to access and utilize that Plutonian energy, you can really um, get a lot of stuff uh, revealed to you. So I was quite pleased to get this revelation for myself. and. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and get started. So the first card that has come out is the tower. And this is our representation. Uranus just went um, retrograde, I think, on the third. Uh, he is retrograde in the sign of Aries. So this is a slowdown. Um, any, any planet in retrograde means it's a slowdown. So that's a time to rework, revise, redo. Uh, but also at the same time, um, Uranus is electrifying. Uranus is about that sudden, sometimes epiphany, sometimes that clearing of the air, uh, sometimes that recognition that whatever you've had now has to be torn down because it can no longer stand. So in, in a way, it's kind of a liberating kind of an energy. So um, for some of you, you might be able to access that energy. Um, I think that's interesting that that card just came out like that. Um, so, and the, the, the three big planets or the four big planets uh, that are in retrograde are um, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and um, Pluto. And that's not a big planet, uh, but <laughs> I think Jupiter might be, he might have come out of retrograde. He might be retrograde. I don't know. I just posted the transits and charts. Y'all look at that on the website because I just don't know. Okay. And then once Mercury goes in, to retrograde, then we're going to have like five planets plus Chiron is going to be retrograde. So that's, uh, and he's an asteroid. Those of you who have your um, asteroid ebook, look at where Chiron is sitting uh, retrograde. He's always retrograde, but, <laughs> but look where, where I think he's always retrograde. I don't know. I don't know. I'm rambling. All right, let's get this started. I do hope that I am able to bring you guys, uh, some of you who may need a glimpse into something. Okay, this is general. The messages will not resonate with everyone. I hope that in, in some way, shape, or form, I'm able to bring you something that might help you no matter what your situation is. Um, take what you can, disregard what you cannot. It requires a personal reading to really look at your situation. 
Wow. Actually, I'm going to do an eight card spread. Okay. Huh. Did I say eight cards? I'm at 12. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. You guys aren't going to believe this. I'm trying to figure out a way, so I'm going to show you the cards. All right. The tower. The Six of Swords, the Two of Swords, the Queen of Wands, the Two of Wands, the Three of Coins, the Page of Swords, the Nine of Coins. The Magician. There's our Mercury card. The Empress. There's our Venus card. And Venus has just moved into Cancer. The World, who is retrograding Saturn. And the Six of Wands. Now, I want to show you guys what's under the deck. Now, what I'm going to do is take the two center cards, which would be the Three of Coins and the Page of Swords. And everything else is going on around these two. Now, I have one, two, three, four major arcana cards here. Um, again, it is going to be past, present, future. And this is going to be kind of tricky. You don't need to know how it plays out, okay? Uh, I mean, you don't need to know how um, I'm going to be reading that. It's not that important, but I'm going to bring you uh, this interesting story. I have two threes here, two twos, two sixes, and two court cards. Let's take a look at the two sixes. And the first thing I want to do is I want to take a look to see if there's any information uh, that um, the deck will reveal to me about either this Six of Swords sitting next to this tower or this Two of Wands sandwiched between the tower and the Magician. Okay. Two sixes in a spread tells of justifiable faith in your partner. That is one meaning of the card. There is no um, information that I can get readily uh, from here about this uh, sitting next to this tower card. So that's the two sixes. That's the one meaning, okay? I'm just going to continue from here. So let me go to the Wands cards and um, see if this Two of Wands here, if there's an extra meaning between these two major arcana. And I think this is a very important um, No, there's no information there. But I have two twos. And a spread tells of a commitment or an engagement. I have the Two of Wands and the Two of Swords. Then I have the Six of Swords and the Six of Wands. Those were my two, uh, what do you call it? Two sixes. 
Now, I want to go to the, the Three of Coins. I know this seems very complicated, you guys, but that's what I do. <laughs> I don't try to make it complicated. I try to be as thorough as I possibly can. All right. Now, in effect, this is sitting, this three of pentacles is sitting next to this um, tower card. The three of pentacles, when it is positioned next to the tower card, tells you to prepare yourself to make necessary changes to plans. Otherwise, there may be a loss in business or some other negotiation. I think perhaps this world card um, can help you. Now, threes in a reading suggest that more than one person is involved in a situation but it also suggests that there may be a period of suspended activity before future successes are brought to fruition. We have the two threes. Uh, the, two th the two threes tell of a uh, small but pleasant surprise. Okay. Now there's one you don't hear very often. Yeah. <laughs> um. It is this last row that is astounding to me. Um, I want to take a look at the Six of Wands. If you will bear with me for a second, because I want to see if it has meaning here next to this world card. Oh, I want to say, she probably isn't watching this, but I wanted to say, Congratulations to my friend, um, formerly Cindy Fernandez, who is now Miss Cindy Figueroa. I have been reading for her for quite a while, and I have been telling her for the longest time that there was somebody coming for her, and she just sent me her wedding pictures the a uh, couple of days ago, and so I was uh, I'm just tickled pink about that. Just tickled pink. <laughs> All right, let's get started here. Let's get started. I feel that there is, for some of you, a situation where there has been some hesitancy about either going into business or doing something or starting some endeavor or getting um, perhaps funding, uh, some kind of support some kind of structure under a uh, some kind of endeavor. Now, we know that the coins rep can represent a financial opportunity, yes, or business opportunity. But it is also about the physicality of doing the work. So there, it's a twofold message here. Um, there is some hesitancy here and that would be borne out by those two threes that message that I just gave that there could be a, a, a moment of suspended activity before uh, success is seen but also sitting next to this tower card it tells us that we want to um, reassess and review our plans retrograde retrograde and retrograde okay so I do feel that for some of you, you will be getting the message that you have been waiting for uh, in the sense uh, that it's going to put you in a better position, okay? This card is not always, I mean, we can, for all intents and purposes, yes, we can seriously say that this is a financial thing, but at the same time, uh, this woman didn't get those fine clothes and that yard full of grapes and that hawk she got sitting on her arm uh, by being uh, frivolous and unfocused. She had to focus. She had to marry her will and her intention and stay grounded. That's how the magician makes his magic, okay? And not lose sight of what it is that you're trying to do. That can be very difficult depending on what else you have going on here. Now...
this page of swords let me go back to the top I think for some of you uh, there was some kind of realization that something was not as it should be or that something kind of didn't have legs to stand on um, and so in effect it all fell apart okay and you have been spending time trying to um, either move away from that psychologically um, or perhaps you have um, for some of you this may have even been a literal move maybe maybe something happened with your home um, sometimes this is a structural issue in terms of a home uh, maybe maybe there is a this is a bad weather card so this could be about uh, a flood or a storm or a lightning strike or something like that that came in and now you got to leave your home yeah okay so that could be literal you're having to move because you know your home has been damaged in some way shape or form if this is not the case for some of you then what this is about or can be about is um, another issue in which uh, things kind of fell apart uh, the legs came out from under it and so you are mentally trying to move away from this particular situation and I feel that some of you uh, are kind of in a place or have been in a place where um, you really didn't know what it was you were what was what you wanted to do you you couldn't seem to come up with an answer for whatever this thing is that's been ailing you yeah mentally vexing you like it was with me mentally vexing um i feel that for some of you um this queen of wands now you may be dealing with a fire sign female um aries leo or sagittarius but no matter what sign you are and no matter if you are male and or female we can all embody our masculine and our feminine energies and we can all embody um, the qualities of each suit each suit is simply that it tells you uh, kind of how uh, a situation plays out on the mundane level so with this queen of wands there's been some I think um, real hesitancy and real doubt perhaps about your creative skills your leadership abilities, your role, uh, where am I going to go now, what am I going to do, I've just had this thing happen to me, um, and I'm not exactly sure what that's all about. For some of you, this could be if there has been some literal damage to your home, uh, you're trying to get that energy to keep it all together, even though you don't know how you're going to do it, <laughs> okay, you're just doing it, and sometimes you don't need to know how things are going to come about the universe can work miracles for you it is sometimes when we uh, worry so about how things are going to be um, taken care of or fixed or rectified that we can stumble upon ourselves sometimes the thing is just to um, go on faith and because you could say really this is not the blind faith card this is the card of being hoodwinked or but the question becomes, are you doing that to yourself or is somebody else doing that to you? Okay. Maybe you did it to somebody and that shit came back to bite you in the ass. I don't know. <laughs> I just read cards. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is the moon in Leo. Now, we just had uh, a moon in Leo last month. And we will be having uh, a full moon in Leo on the 21st. So that might give you some kind of timing here as to this could go back to something that happened last month. Yeah, there is no timing in, in the tarot. What I think for, I feel for some of you, you have in effect, um, it, it is these two twos. It's actually this, this two of wands that's kind of throwing me off a little bit. Because the implication of the two of wands is that you have, you do have options and choices. Everybody does. Um, and what's interesting <laughs> is that this represents Uranus energy, but it also represents Mars energy. That's that fire energy. Uranus is an air energy. So like lightning, crackling, lightning is what fire coming from the sky. That's really all it is. Yeah. Well, this represents Mars and Aries. 
that's its ruler. Well, Uranus has retrograded into Aries. And here is our Mercury coming up. So that could be what those two of wands are telling me, is that suddenly perhaps shit has screeched to a halt, or suddenly you have figured out, wait a minute, I can't go any further right. Okay, I can't, I can't do this right now. Um, but the thing is, is that you have a choice about that, okay? Now, if this is about something that has come to a screeching halt or has completely collapsed altogether, then the advice would be for you to be like the magician. Marry your will and your intention. Know that you can go back and continue at a later date, or you can rework, reassess that whatever it is you want to do. And if you marry your will and your intention, you will be successful because you don't have to do it the same old way. So for some of you, this could be about changing the way either you view your role in the situation or those other people. Um, sometimes we have to compromise. Well, you know, most to have a successful anything requires compromise where everybody can come to the table, put their uh, concerns out in the open, and then try to work together so that once that thing is done, everybody can get up and walk away from the table feeling like they've gotten what they wanted out of it. You may not get as much as you want out of it, but you know, getting something sometimes is better than getting nothing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you you know, if you've been a little um, selfish and a little mean and a little overbearing and a little rude to people, um, you might want to reconsider that. Um, and try to figure out another way to do what it is that you need to do or that you want to do or that you're trying to accomplish. Um, I feel if you can do that, we have the Magician, the Empress, and the World card. You are really, really nearing the end of this. There is a lot of abundance here. For some of you, you may have had to, whatever this thing was that collapsed, literally by leaving, you are, you are, are, are opening up the opportunity um, for some abundance to come in. This could be walking away from one situation and moving into a group or meeting other people during your move or your travels who uh, you're going to be able to, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Bond with. Venus is about bonding, but in a harmonious way, not in an overbearing way. I feel that this is a partnership issue, um, and no matter what type of partnership, all partnerships require uh, communication, uh, transparency, um, and really getting down to the truth of saying, you know, this is what I, I bring to the table, this is what I got, this is what I'm willing to, you know, and in exchange, you know, these are my expectations. Um, and then try to work through those. Um, I'm looking at this Queen of Wands, the Page of Swords, and the Empress card. Um, I feel that for some of you, you will be able to pull this out, but it's going to require... The Page is a student. So this is really about uh, learning how to communicate uh, your values or the value of something, okay? Um, I think that some of you, when you move away, whether mentally or psychologically, uh, you were going to get a message that that was in effect, the proper and correct, there's a victory in that, all right? Sometimes you got to step away from the table and step away from the situation, um, especially when you have no clarity, yeah? Um, and we are, there is no Neptune energy here, thank God. Um, <laughs> um, so, you know, because the, the Neptune is that the more you try to search for the truth, the murkier it becomes. Um, I 
I do feel that for some of you around this lunar eclipse, as above, so below, something, you're going to get a glimpse of something. This is the something. This is it. And this tells me that perhaps the main thing that has been the problem is that the way that we've been thinking or the way that things may have appeared and things that we're not certain of has caused us to procrastinate. Okay? And procrastination is a choice. It is. Not making a decision is making a decision. But this tells me that while you're waiting on trying to decide what it is, but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make a decision one way or the other. And um, this tells me here with this world card uh, that um, that is about to come to an end for some of you. Now we know that Saturn will be uh, going direct December 22nd, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, somewhere in between those three days. It will be leaving Sagittarius. Sagittarius rules the World Wide Web, uh, college, university, publishing, foreigners, uh, long distance travel, religion, philosophy, beliefs, um, gurus, <laughs> um, uh, And for some of you, this could be about uh, really having some business losses during this Saturn and Sagittarius transit. It's been there two years. Uh, depending on where um, Sagittarius sits in your natal chart, it's going to show you where, you know, you may have been having trouble with people who um, are vastly different from you. Perhaps this is having to do with, you know, work in some in some way, shape, or form. It could also mean you've been dealing with uh, uh, organizations that have been kind of slow on the uptake to get their shit together. Um, excuse my language, but, you know, that could play out anyway. Definitely, there's some kind of news coming in for you guys that will be bringing this, that's going to kind of wrap this situation up for you. Uh, for some of you, I feel that it is, um, that your original deal will be successful. For others of you, you're going to have to walk away from one deal, but what you're walking into is a new sense of self and a new sense of being grounded. Now, in Roman mythology, and you guys know I use the Roman asteroids, she represents Ceres. And we have, at the moment, Venus has entered the sign of Cancer. Uh, she represents the mother of the tarot. Uh, the mother uh, that symbology is ruled by uh, Cancer and the Moon. So we have um, Ceres is in Cancer. Fortuna is also, I think, in Cancer. Uh, this is just in uh, yeah, she's in Fortuna, and she's a very powerful, powerful little asteroid. Uh, she is like the Wheel of Fortune, which tells you that. You know, what happened in the past, don't take that shit personal. You know, ups and downs, that's the way it works. But just when you think that all hope is lost, the wheel turns again. And you're given another opportunity. Uh, Ceres is all about um, sharing, carving up territory. It's about power and control. It's also about compromise. Okay, how can everybody get what they want? Um, and then we have, um, let's see, there's one more point that's in, oh, Venus herself has moved into Cancer. So this is bonding. This is about um, 
coming together with uh, another person and, and bonding, sharing your space. But it can also be about your lineage, your heritage, where you come from, your hometown, your homeland, property issues, um, nurturing. So there's a lot of symbology going on here as well. And this also, to me, this is another representation of um, Fortuna here. In effect, that's another kind of a wheel of fortune. And the only way sometimes to get through a situation is to fix yourself in the center of the wheel. That way, if shit goes bad, okay, whatever. Uh, it's not personal. That just wasn't meant to be. Try to remain balanced. See, she's holding those two wands. See, she's holding those two wands there in her hands. Can you see that? And this is about accepting that 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 situation. And that's what Saturn does. Saturn comes in and he gives you two years. Um, and what he does is when he moves into a particular sign, no matter what house that you don't have to be a, a Sagittarian sun, moon, or rising uh, to experience Saturn uh, in Sagittarius. You find wherever Sagittarius sit on your damn chart, and that's where Saturn's going to be. So this is going to be, he's, he comes in to test uh, those structures that you have up built in that area, that life department, whatever house he he's sitting in. And what he'll do is he'll, he'll come in and poke and prod, and he'll show you where it's weak. And so what, what it's designed to do, he gives you two years to fix that, to work on it, to shore it up. Okay, so that when he brings his ass around again, <laughs> and he will, um, you know, um, you've got some kind of protection and some safeguard there. I think for some of you, the um, real is that you're going to end up doing it alone by yourself. Okay. And only you can make that determination. Now, I say that with this Two of Cups sitting here. Even though the Two of Cups is about union and sharing and cooperation and love, and it is about that relationship that really is in your highest good, having a relation, a good relationship with yourself is always in your highest good. Okay? Always. So um, that Two of Cups can mean a lot of different things. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at these. Um, know that. You know what's funny? Man, y'all don't know what's funny, but I'm, I'm fixing to tell y'all what's funny. I just posted the transit watch. And every single one of these cards, here's Capricorn, here is Leo, here is Virgo. Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Uranus. Uh, we just had, uh, there's a, a moon, Mars conjunction, I think, when I posted the thing yesterday. But Mars is um, really kicking, kicking butt and taking names right about now. He's making a lot of aspects uh, right now. So my email, I woke up this morning, I had a ton of emails. People like, oh my God, that's that Martian energy. Um, and it's coming up with this moon Okay, this lunar eclipse. Do know that whatever anger or aggression or whatever that is, those ugly ass emotions that are coming up for you, know that this is gonna pass. The moon is the fa is the fastest moving uh, body in the sky. It moves every two and a half days to a different sign. Okay, that's why you need to get my friend Alexander's uh, app called iLuna. It tells you when the moon is void, what sign it's moving to. It's going. To, uh, it's a change this morning from Capricorn to Aquarius. Then guess what? There's our full moon in Aquarius on the 7th. And then two days later, he goes from Aquarius to Pisces. She does. So um, 
that's a good little app. You can get it in the App Store, I think, for both iPhone and Android. It's called iLuna. Um, can you? It looks like that. He's also, uh, if you go to the website and you see that uh, when I have the thing up, it says Learn Astrological Forecasting. He's got, <laughs> he's got um, a really good course. Um, you don't have to want to be an astrologer to learn to read the stars because I tell you, one of the best things that I ever did was finally just put my feet in. I've been sticking my toe in astrology since I was 12 years old. And I finally, you know, taking it out, putting it back in. And finally, and it is a past life uh, gift that I have or skill. And once I have gotten both of my feet in, it is literally one of the best things I've ever done because it kind of helps me plot where it is that I'm going and what it is that I'm doing. It doesn't mean that um, it's going to suddenly my life is going to be better than it ever was. It still requires work. You know, um, you're not just handed things. What you're being given is an opportunity. And what astrology can do is either show you those positive opportunities or show you how to sidestep something negative. OK, but ultimately, whatever you decide is your free will. OK, you have to make your own choices. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm not trying to make my own way. So I want to look at this tower. So those transits that I posted, this is the kind of the story. And I think for many people, it's there aren't any fours here, um, which would speak to me of uh, security and home. Um, what you consider home, um, but there's a roundabout reference, particularly here with the Empress card, uh, because um, there are three messages coming from her with the, with the Ceres and the Moon card and Cancer. Um, so this is, I think, very, very important for a lot of you. Um, if you don't have your charts yet, your eBooks, your primer, you're not on the site, come over, spend seven dollars get 30 day access. You still get your two free charts and there's plenty of stuff there uh, for you guys. I have new products for those of you who need a little bit more tutoring on how to read the transits or want to get a little bit more information. I've got new products up. You know, I can put the information out there, but I can't force you to, you know, to participate. Um, but that doesn't stop me from doing what I do. Uh, those of you who have been with me for a while have heard me say I have a vision, <laughs> you know, and if I build it, they will come. That still holds true for me. Let's look at this tower card. Vedvo, lecherezza, gran signore. Now, now, there's two stories here. So for some of you, this has been um, an unexpected ending. Uh, due to some kind of upset or change or irritability or sensitivity with perhaps a king of cups or uh, this is the lord of the manor or the man of high society. We, we would also assume that he's a business person and he could be rather wealthy. So if this is not a romantic thing, this is speaking about some kind of sudden ending in either a romantic area or a business. And we see in one respect, it's a business thing. Now, I don't know if this is related to some kind of business trip. Okay. Let's see that. Whatever this is, it didn't go well. And, and we had to walk away from it. You know... Let me say this um, because it it reads two things. I am picking up that there was some kind of surprise um, condition or term that was wholly unexpected. Uh, I also feel that whatever that change of term or condition or that breach of contract was, it was um, 
purposely done as a manipulation. Sometimes the magician uh, does not act from the highest. We, we, everybody has that. And that may be why we had to walk away from that particular situation. Let me look at this magician and see what that's saying. And I think that's what explain to me now why I have the two of swords, the three of pentacles, and the magician card. It's like you were blindsided by this. Um, and the option was to go with it or not go with it. Um, hmm. In which case, I would say that stepping away from it was a good was a good thing. I want to look at this magician, the casa. Well, we were talking about homes just a minute ago. Let's let's move the prigione. Wow, and the fortuna. Wow, that's interesting. I was not expecting to see those cards. That still holds true what I said. That would have occurred for some of you. For others of you, this was some kind of deal, I think, or some kind of opportunity or a choice uh, that... In one respect, you worked on it. You worked on it. Uh, perhaps this was uh, some kind of financial, I mean, a tr real estate transaction. But that also looks like a bank to me. It looks rather official. It's an ugly house. Um, <laughs> but here's this guy that's chained up in the basement of that house. Okay? As if he can't get his mojo working for whatever reason. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying, but he can't. Well, that goes back to that procrastination. But there's that wheel of fortune. There's Fortuna. Remember, I was just talking about her. I was just talking about her. So this is about a, a re... Um, Ascalapius is also in play for many of you. Get your, get your charts in... It, Use your zero Aries chart to see where he's falling. No, you don't. Use your Coke chart to see. You'd have to do solar sign. Okay, whatever. I, I can't even tell y'all that. Uh, to see where he's sitting. Okay? Uh, Ascalapius. Bringing things coming back from the brink. Just when you think shit was over or done with, it comes back. But this is Fortuna. And Fortuna is really the wheel of fortune. Life's ups and downs. And again, in a way, it's like if something fell apart, lost its legs, uh, there was uh, a moving away, whether literally or metaphorically, there, there was a real, even though you may not see it that way now, that was a real stroke of luck for you. That's the universe getting you to step out of your way. Okay. I still think there's something that was about a contract that, let's go to this two of swords. I'm still getting that message and, you know, I don't know why that may be true for, for some of you out there. See, there he is. Y'all know who that is. That's the thief who presented themselves one way because both of these guys, this guy's supposed to help you. Yeah. But he's also known as a collaborator. Okay. So he can be quite manipulative and sneaky. He came in and tried to, in one respect, the term is not steal your faith, but your belief or made you question what it is you thought you knew. Okay. 
Um, and I do feel for some of you that you were able to hold on to your faith and your belief. You see, he's supposed to be a counselor too, but these are 14th century cards and priests had wives. They had gambling addictions, drug addictions. They own property. It's not like priests nowadays. Um, all that stuff was hidden under the surface though, even though it was well known perhaps to some in the community. Um, the everyday folk weren't kind of aware of that. Children, you know. Let's look. I'm going to look at two more cards and then we're going to close this reading out. I think that no matter how this situation, bide your time, remain grounded, remain focused, um, really get a handle on who and what is most important to you. That's what Venus is all about. It's your values. Okay. And if you place a value on something, you got to be willing to uphold that. All right. And if you're placing a value on something and someone is not willing to pay the price, then you know to walk away from it. Or at least you should. Why? Not all money is good money and it's always more than one way to skin a cat. Okay? That ain't the only, that ain't the only deal in the world. <laughs> the Lemoneo. The Lamonte. Oh, this is convoluted. And the Bambino. This is convoluted. Oh, wow. Now. Isn't that something? I don't even know what to make of those three cards on that Six of Swords. Again, there's that, that, that contractual thing that I'm speaking about. There's the Lemoneo. We, we saw that there were commitments and engagements and um, faith. Um, here we have the Two of Cups. Um... Two things, either this female lover, Lamonte, she was like, man, to hell with whatever that is. And she moved on. Okay. Or at least not moved on. She had to move away from whatever that was uh, to get some fresh new clarity or, or whatever the case may be. But it also... With these three cards, it, it almost speaks like some kind of misunderstanding here. I'm just going to have to do it, y'all. This two of wands. Remember, because we were talking about as well procrastination. And here we see somebody tied down. Now she sits in the center and she would go with the Lecherezza card, the Lecherezza, the Lamonte, and the Yardro. So to me, it says that she herself had a change of, uh, not heart, but maybe she was just fed up with something. Uh, and has not been able to decide whether or not um, something was done on purpose or this isn't the reason why I say that is because it's the domestico with this guy with the two of swords or should the person keep their faith okay 
in something or this person. I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'm just giving it to you like they're telling me. Letrato. Mercante. And the amulato. It's the procrastination. Let me just sit and think about this for a minute, okay? I, I figured out what I want to do. But look, what's funny is that each one of these guys is facing like the wand. Okay? Well, let me sit down and think about it. I might do this. I might do that. But shit, I can't get up off my ass and do either one of them. I don't because I don't know what to do. Uh, um, let's look at the page of swords and then we're going to close this down. People... For all intents and purposes, the story that the, Len the Lenormans, the story that the um, there's also an uncertainty of whether or not this person, this female lover, Lamante, has moved on with somebody else. And maybe the person feels that they're it, that's being hidden from them. I oh, don't know. The damn eclipses just be putting in all kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> yes, that's why we see the 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 the. the, the See, she's got her back turned to that contract. And I'm not getting that this is necessarily about another man or another, I, I think the, that could be up in the air, perhaps. In which case, she getting her mojo back? <laughs> Um, it is this six of swords because see the implication of the six of swords is you can move away from this situation you can move clear around the world but guess what you're still taking that with you all of this still goes with you see and they they are blocking. They are in a sense protecting. So in one sense, I don't feel like this is about them um, finding someone else. I think it's just that they needed a fresh start. They needed something new. Um, babies represent innocence and childlike qualities, and um, openness and accepting babies are vessels when they come in um, and we formulate these little bitty beings by what we pour into them so it, it, it kind of speaks like the person is still open maybe open might be open but it's definitely open I mean you know <laughs> let's look at this page of swords here then we're gonna close this down this is getting crazy Speranza hope well, the messagere has come. Holy smokes. Let's see what the next card is. And the lamica. So in one respect, I'm getting that someone themselves perhaps have been hoping and waiting on a message to come in. Either that message has come. Here we see this six of wands. Or that message will be coming. Uh, I've been hoping for a message from far away. Uh, this is, uh, it is a, a message about friendship and trust and confidence. Um, so it looks as though whatever this situation is, whether it, it is financially related and it could be both things, partnership, um, that there was a fracture, there was some misunderstanding, there was some maybe underhandedness in some way shape or form there was some kind of thing that just didn't go right 
Um, I think for some of you, you're going to be given a second chance at this. If this is the case, don't blow it <laughs> because it looks to be quite uh, lucrative, quite abundant, um, quite um, kind of that everything you've ever wanted, completion kind of a thing. So don't blow it. You know, and if this is related to some kind of Saturn issue, um, it takes 29 years for Saturn to come back around. That's a long ass time. And it's going to take Jupiter another 12 years to reach your sign. If he's already been in your sign, you won't see him again for another 12 years. If he's coming into your sign, he's going to spend a year there. And then you don't see him in that sign again for another 12 years. So Jupiter is trying to get you to... Um, plant those seeds, clear that ground, and get ready. Okay, that's really the message that's coming through. You're 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 going to be given, I think, um, a second opportunity on multiple levels. So don't blow that, um, please. It may not be easy, but then again, nothing worth having is. That's what putting a value on something. You can go out and buy something that costs a whole lot. Then you get it home and you find out it's a piece of crap. Um, <laughs> so, you know, kind of you get what you pay for. But when you really um, get down to, let's say you had to work and really a long time and save and save and save for something. Then when you get whatever that thing is, you know how to value it and take care of it, right? And you're going to make sure it's the good stuff. Um, don't be tricked and fooled. All right. Please formulate one question in your mind. I hope that helps some of you guys. I don't know what the hell that was all about, but <laughs> I don't need to know. Um, hey, my head hurt. Okay. Dad used to say, my head looked like yours. It would hurt too. Wah, wah, wah. Got that one question formulated. I'm, I'm trying to, I need some new decks. I, I've already picked out a couple of new decks. Some other stuff that I got I want to bring to you guys. Ready? It says take action. What do I just say to you? I don't think you're going to get another chance like this. So. This is our outcome, the sun card. Can you see that? Well. The time has come to take action. Your angels are waiting for you to take the next step so that they can assist you along the path to your dreams. Do away with procrastination and uncertainty. Remember I said it was all up in there. In your heart, you know what to do, so get going. Whether you're focused upon career, relationships, or some other topic, the fulfillment of your wishes isn't going to just fall into your lap. Didn't I just say that to y'all? The stars can help you, but you, you know, they can give you some guidance, but you got to get out there and do the damn work. You must be actively focused on the pursuit of what you want, and I think that's what that magician card is all about. What is this? The shine card. <laughs> you could we couldn't have ended this with a, a more lovelier major arcana. It's the sun. And the sun as an outcome is always a yes. So if some of you were been on the fence about chasing whatever your dream is or stepping into that dream, um, the answer is yes, please do that. You may not get another opportunity to do that, okay? Or the stars may not be in your favor so much the next time. Or you may have to wait another 12 to 29 years. Or another, what, Pluto stand sign, 14 years? Jesus, I don't know. The keywords, believe, realize, harness, enthusiasm, potential, and breakthrough. 
This card symbolizes the positive and powerful, powerful energy that now surrounds you. By embracing this energy, you can improve current relationships and draw new ones to, to you. See yourself in a glowing orb of brilliant golden light. Step into your power. It doesn't say that. I'm saying that. Believe in the power of this light to infuse your relationships with enthusiasm, life, greater love, and understanding. See it moving outward, surrounding all of the people you know and filling them with joy and hope. Visualization can be quite powerful, so use it to magnetize and attract what you want in your life. Magnetize. It's also time for you to let your own light shine. You are an amazing being. You're, magnific you're magnificent. Realizing and believing this is the key to unlocking your personal potential. Be confident in your dealings with others. Use your talents to point relationships in positive, empowering directions. Letting your own light shine will act as a beacon to attract others to you, people of like mind and similar vibration. It will also encourage others to let their own light shine. That's that two of cups energy. Harnessing the amazing energy surrounding you and shining from within you. Harness the amazing energy surrounding you and shining from within you. Use this energy to break through any obstructions that stand in the way of complete happiness. Know that you deserve the best. People are attracted to you when you are joyful, enthusiastic, and confident. So radiate these qualities into the world and see what beautiful things you attract. The affirmation is, I shine my light out into the world and joyfully attract all that I desire. I hope that that helps some of you. Um, out there. And so until next time. Thank you for allowing me to read for you. Namaste.